to illustrate the differences between using QGIS and GRASS, I'm actually going to get you to do one, one, uh, one thing in GRASS. So when we open it up, you're going to be presented with this uh, opening screen for, for it, and we're going to actually browse for the directory. Okay, and for me, it is under users. QGIS sample data. And then we will go to grass data. Sorry. Grass data. Alaska and demo. And then we will enter grass. Um, I have to do one thing quickly. I need to close the grass map set that I have currently open in QGIS before I can do that because it will only allow one connection at a time. Okay, so now I'm in. Now, in grass we've got a few different windows going on here. Okay, so I'm going to shrink the terminal down and stick him in the corner. The map display we will bring over there. Now right off the bat you notice it takes a little longer to actually set up even the uh, display. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin just working with a raster. I'll show you this way. If we go down in here and, and click, the module I want to use is called r.walk. So we're going to do that by running the GUI. Okay. I'll stretch that out. Now these are all the different things that we can do. We're going to use the Knight's Move. Okay, it's more accurate. The elevation map that we're going to use is that. I've actually forgotten that we need to create the friction map, and so we're going to do another one, which is r dot slope. Oh, it's r dot. slope aspect. Okay, so the raster elevation is G topo, the output slope name will be G topo slope, and the aspect G topo aspect, and we'll check settings, format for reporting the slope, degrees is fine, We've got lots of advanced stuff we can worry about too, but we're not going to worry about that. And then we'll just run it. Now, you'll see it's running, but what I want to point out is this down here is the actual command that you would use down here in the command line box to perform this. All of these options that we can fill in, you can do on the command line. Okay. The GUI is quite a bit easier if you're doing single steps like this. So that's done now. All done. We'll click, click close. And now when we want our friction cost, what we'll do is we will load the slope. Alright. We also are going to need a starting point. Are we? Um, yes, we're going to need a starting point. So what I'll do is I'll just move that one out of the way a little bit. 
and we will open this raster. Okay, we'll click raster. The base map is going to be the topo map. Okay, and then you have to tell it on the map display to draw. Display active layers, yeah. So if we want to zoom in now, we will zoom in And if we want to see how long it's going to take to walk from one point to another point, we should probably pick some populated places. So we will open up a vector layer. Okay. And then we will choose, um, well, uh, we'll go with airports walk between airports. Redraw all layers. This here button a lot it fills the display window. Otherwise it'll only display the um, amount that you select. So if we want to know how long it's going to take to walk from here to here. If we want to do a cost surface map, we'll select this point. Um, and you'll see that when we've gotten the info about it, we've we should have the coordinates. Okay. So when we go back into our r.walk, what we're going to do is, we'll put in the name of the raster map, is the walk cost surface, starting point east is negative 15854100.4. Is it east thing, north thing, four five one four eight seven two point three six five one five. Okay, we're also going to do this point up here. We'll just do just past it. We're going to stop this cost surface when we reach negative 1748566.639, comma, 4815502.73859. Okay. This is all good. The lambda value is 1, which means it's just normal walking attributes. And then we will click on Run. Okay, now we can watch the progress over here in the output. There it was reading the topple map. Here it's reading the friction map, which was the slope. make this bigger so you can see more of what's happening. Okay, now we'll go back, we will add another raster, walk cost surface, redraw the layers, And there now is the cost surface for the walking time. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually do the path function. And for that, we'll slip back into QGIS. So there, that give you a little bit of an 
idea of how it is to work in grass. So we will file exit. We will also exit from here to close the map set. Okay. And then we will, whoops, wrong one. We will bring QGIS back up. Now we will open the grass map set. Okay. And we will load the new cost surface. Okay. We will give it a nice color. Yeah. Zoom in a little bit so that we can. All right. Next, what we're going to do is open up the grass toolkit. We're going to use a feature called r.drain. Now, this is actually a function, a module that allows you to pick the flow of water according to the map. However, if you've created the surface, cost surface with r.walk, you'll actually find the most efficient walking route between two points. Okay, so again we're going to go to raster and then r.drain. If we want to know more about r.drain, we can click on manual and see exactly what everything does, how it works and how to use it, okay? So the existing raster map with the cost surface, yeah? And we will call this path between airports. Now we need to know the east and north coordinates and because I didn't think to write them down before, we have to do them now. We can't see the airports because this path is on top. So we're going to move that up. And now we can see. So we will hover. And I want you to keep your eyes on this down here. So in this instance now, actually, I think I better go like that. Is this the grass? the grass one. Okay, good. I'll pan down a little bit. Um, okay, we'll try this. And that doesn't give us the coordinates. So we will have to remember negative 1584964 Okay. And then we will go to the other airport. Which is negative one seven four five two. One four four eight zero nine six six eight. Okay, and then we will click on run. Okay, we can then immediately view the output. 
and there is the most efficient walking route as with respect to time between these two airports based on the topography of the land. We will get rid of this cost surface. Now, one of the things that this that becomes very clearly evident when, as soon as you see this is that there is a river involved and it has not taken into effect into account the fact that these rivers are being crossed which is obviously quite problematic there are ways around this and they will be discussed in another module